hello to all my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's True North Locks, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you join me again, and if this is your first time watching, welcome. I appreciate all of you and your interest in learning with me so much. Today we're going to learn how to make lux or loose-ended wool dreadlocks. I am so excited to share this tutorial as a follow-up to my first wool dreads making video. In that one we went over everything you need to know to make your own machine felted dreads. So check out that video if you haven't watched it yet and you aren't familiar with the basics of prepping wool. So if you're new to wool or you have any questions about prepping wool roving, just check out the description and I'll have that video linked. Lastly, and most importantly, I just want to say that I have not paid for anyone else's loose-ended dread videos. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have an extra grand or so to be paying other hair makers, nor have I gotten any of the techniques I'm going to show you from anyone that has purchased those videos. After three years of extensive research, trial and error, and lots of money and wasted supplies, I have worked out a method that works the best for me. I'm sure someone does it better and smarter, but this is just what has worked out for me, and I am all about education and access to information that can help you make things for yourself. I'm a crafter at heart, and to me this is truly an art form that I've grown to love. My hair makes me feel the most beautiful I've ever felt, and everyone deserves that feeling regardless of their economic status. If my videos inspire you to start your own business or just make yourself the hair you've always wanted, then I am so happy you clicked today and let's get started. To begin we need wool roving. I'm using both merino and Icelandic textures for the base of the dread. Next you'll need unprocessed wool locks. I'm using gorgeous Teeswater locks that have been pre-dyed from the sweetest Etsy seller. Her link will also be in the description. Rubber kitchen gloves a felting needle, and something to felt on. I got this three needle pen from Amazon and I use scrap foam. To get started, we need to blunt the ends of our roving. This will allow for a more seamless look between the roving and the unprocessed uncomb lock. Pick out two locks, similar size and length. Next, fan out the hair as evenly as possible. This will allow us to fully enclose the tease water lock. You want at least an inch of felting space. This will ensure you don't lose your gorgeous loose end from the rest of the wool roving. Gently roll the lock in the fanned roving like a little wool burrito and very carefully and gently begin to felt the lock and roving together with your felting needle. Do the same thing with the opposite side if you're making double-ended dreads. Teeswater wool isn't traditionally what you would see with Lux ends, but I love the unique look of the curls and twists, so that's what I'm using today. You can also use unprocessed mohair locks for the typical Lux look. Rewet your wool, and now with our gloves, we are going to start felting. Gently pinch roll the wool between your fingers, leaving a small bit of slack for the dread to move. Vigorously rub your hands in an up and down motion. Rewet your wool again and continue to felt on your mat. I like to use both my hands and the mat for different textures and bumps. Don't be afraid to really roll them and experiment with the textures you can make. When the roving starts to feel dry, simply dip it back into the hot water and keep rolling.
You want to go until the dreads feel firm yet flexible and you don't have any visible cracks running down the dread. One important thing to remember is to not brush the unprocessed Tease Water wool locks before or after you hand felt or use the washing machine method. Doing so will cause a large loss of bulk and compromise the strength of the wool. If you don't want to hand felt or pinch roll, you can simply follow the steps to attach the loose ends like in this video, and then use the same technique to gently roll the dread and machine felt like in my first video. The ends will come out more random and fuzzier this way, but I still think they look so cool. So that's all there is to it guys. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I really do just want everyone to have the hair of their dreams and be able to explore their creative side. If you want more hair tutorials and tips for dreadlock maintenance coming up, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoyed today's video and you learned something, please hit that like button. And be kind, be confident, and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys in the next one.